Today, I'm gonna to show you how I turned $50 into six delicious meals for my family of five. This video goes along with a blog post that is gonna show you the entire grocery list that you can just print out, super easy for you, and you should be able to shop along at Walmart for less than $50. I chose meals that are easy to make, so you're not gonna have to uh, learn any crazy new skills. And all of the recipes are also on the website for you so you can print those out and get cooking. I'm gonna start by sharing my grocery haul, everything that I purchased, why I purchased it, and then I'm gonna go through every meal that we ate. I'm a mom of three and a wife to my husband, Dan. So we all were eating these meals through the week and there was plenty on most nights we ended up having leftovers. So this is a meal plan that should have plenty of food and even rollover food onto the next few weeks. All right, so here is everything that I purchased. I have the shopping list uh, down in the blog in the description box, so you can just easily download that if you wanna use it. Uh, we're gonna do some Ritz chicken with broccoli and um, rice. So we've got a bunch of chicken breasts. This is gonna go for a few meals. We're gonna slice them in half. You don't need like a ton of protein at each meal, uh, as long as you have a well-rounded and well-balanced meal. So for that, we need the chicken. We need cream of chicken soup, um, these crackers. We're gonna have plenty of crackers, so we'll have those for leftovers for snacks too. The kids really like those. I got a five pound bag of rice. This meal um, plan is very rice heavy. Uh, because it's inexpensive and it's easy to make and it's gonna go along really well with what we're gonna make. So I just figured why not grab the big, the big bag and this will actually leave me with some for next week too. So it's great. This is really like a stock up list as well for only $50. Uh, the next day we're doing some tacos. The kids have actually been planning uh, meals lately and they wanted to do plain tacos. They like flour tortillas, but you could also get crunchy. You get 20 of these, so we're gonna have more than enough um, for leftovers and stuff like that for the next week too. I've got a pound of cheese. We're gonna use this for the tacos as well as a rice and bean skillet. Uh, just a pound of the ground seasoned turkey. And then to kind of make more of a filler, because there's five of us and we want to have you know plenty of tacos. Um, I actually wanted to get a large container of refried beans because I'll need one for um, my rice and bean skillet and also for my tacos. Um, they replaced it with these pinto beans. I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to cook these up or just order another <laughs> large container of refried beans from a different store because I don't necessarily want to cook them up. I'm just trying to go with something easy, but it's easy enough to cook them up. It's an option, but the canned kind are really good too, and they just save time. Uh, sour cream, plenty of sour cream because we need it for our tacos, and we also need it for our Ritz chicken, and we're also going to need it for um, the rice and bean skillet. So right after the tacos, we're doing a rice and bean skillet. That's going to be refried beans, corn, petite diced tomatoes, um, and cheese, sour cream, whatever you want to put on it, salsa, that jazz, some onion, garlic. Garlic is also good pretty much in any of these things. Okay, and the next dish we're gonna do is just a vegetarian fried rice. So I've got plenty of rice, I've got this mixed vegetable medley, we've got onion, we've got garlic, and I have eggs. And so, I mean, it depends on whether you eat eggs if you're vegetarian, but that's where we're gonna get our protein in this. And I'm also gonna have some eggs left over for the week as well. So there'll be plenty in there and that should be a really um, hearty dish. I didn't buy any soy sauce because I have some on hand, um, but you can easily get some for like a dollar. The next meal is going to be a uh, no peak chicken. So, so far we've only used the chicken for the uh, Ritz chicken. So the next thing is a no peak chicken, another couple of chicken breasts sliced in half um, over rice with some onion. And then we'll serve that with the green, the French style green beans. I'll just cook those up um, in a pan with any seasonings that you like. I like to use the um, to Tony, uh, Tony, I can never say it, Uncle Tony's, whatever, <laughs> uh, seasoning with mine. And then for the uh, last meal, you can do this in any order you want, uh, Indian chicken. And this was a recipe that my family loves and was uh, sent in by a subscriber at one point and just really, really fantastic. So we'll use our last two uh, chicken breasts gonna put those in the crock pot with cream cheese. Julian already broke into this but it's okay if you don't have like a full um, container of cream cheese but if you do I think like you only need half I don't know I will have the recipe and I'll show you the recipe but uh, either way it's okay if I don't have everything and then uh, salsa we'll need to save like half this jar for that so just make sure I have that have this have my chicken and we'll serve it over rice 
and that's gonna be a really uh, delicious meal as well. My family loves that. We also have some non bread in the freezer, so I might uh, take that out and toast it up, but you don't have to have it because it's not in the grocery list, but this is really gonna help the budget. All right, so this first one is super simple. We've seen it a million times. We're just doing simple tacos. I'm having the kids help out a lot more in the kitchen lately, and it's been extremely helpful. So I have them set the table. Julian is helping me with the meat. I was teaching him about stovetop safety, keeping his hands away, staying safe. It's actually been really fun and quite a rewarding experience, and it's life skills that I feel like they're gonna need to know anyway. Everyone always asks me about these taco plates and I actually got these at Aldi, but I have similar ones linked in my Amazon store and on the blog. We just heated up some of the uh, flour tortilla shells according to package instructions. I served it with shredded cheese, some that I already had. I wanted to use that first and salsa and sour cream. Next one, I'm making a super simple curry chicken in the crock pot. And then to go with that, I made instant pot rice. You put two cups of dry rice with four cups of water, close it, cook it on high pressure for three minutes, and then let it slow release for 15 to 20. I did 20 and it was fine. And then I made the chicken with two chicken breasts cut in half right in the bottom of your slow cooker, one cup of salsa and three tablespoons of curry powder. And then you cook that on low for three hours. If you need to go longer, do. My slow cooker just tends to cook chicken, especially thin cut in three hours, just fine. And then you wanna add in four ounces, that's half of your uh, eight ounce container of cream cheese. And then just mix that around and shred up that chicken at the same time you're kind of mixing in the cream cheese. And if you need to, you can let it cook a little bit longer to really melt the cream cheese in there. But what you're gonna get as a result in the end is this really creamy chicken. This recipe was initially sent in by subscriber Michelle and thank you so much because this has become a family favorite and a budget favorite um, over, I think it's barely been about a year or so over the past year and we've made it dozens of times and it's still a hit. So you just serve that over rice and you have a perfect dinner. And next up, we're making a really simple vegetable fried rice. We do have some egg in there for some protein and some really easy microwave wontons. Now I get that some of these are maybe things that I have shown before, but this, this budget meal plan is so perfect, at least for my family. It's so delicious, it's things that we love. So that's why I really wanted to share it with you. You wanna start by dicing half an onion. So you want half of one of your onions and two cloves of garlic. You can totally do more if you want because we have plenty of garlic and it's delicious. If you didn't go to the store and buy the things on the grocery list and you're not following this meal plan and you don't have onion and garlic, you can always use onion powder and garlic powder. Then I'm cracking two eggs and just kind of scrambling those up. We're gonna start off by cooking our eggs in a wok or a pan. I have a wok and if I use it quite a bit. I find that like I use it for a lot of stir fries and stuff. So I do love the wok that I have. That is also linked on the vlog, but like I said, uh, a stir fry or a regular pan will do just fine as well. I use sesame oil, but you can use any sort of like high fry point oil uh, to cook your eggs. And you're just gonna cook them up like regular scrambled eggs, just keep stirring. In the meantime, I'm getting my vegetables cooked. I literally just followed the instructions on the back of the package and put those in the microwave to cook them up. And then you just wanna remove those eggs and set them aside on a plate or a bowl, add more oil, and we wanna cook over high heat here. And you're just gonna cook up that onion for a couple of minutes until it's kind of softer, stirring kind of constantly because it's a stir fry. Then you add in the garlic just for maybe 30 seconds until it's fragrant. And then we can add in those mixed vegetables. And again, we're just gonna kind of stir this constantly. And I forgot to mention off to the side there, you see my white rice cooking. You're gonna need a couple of cups of cooked white rice. So I just cooked mine in a pot today, according to the package instructions on the back of the white rice. You could have cooked double the recipe in the Instant Pot yesterday. I just wasn't even thinking about it for whatever reason, <laughs> even though this is my job, but you know kids i've got three kids life gets in the way we stop thinking about things and that's okay so i just added up probably three to four cups of rice you can really add as much as you like and then stir fry that right around with all of those veggies and onions at this point you want to add the egg back to the stir fry and kind of mix it well until it's well incorporated and then add a quarter cup to a third a cup of soy sauce. I ended up just using 
what was left of one of my bottles of soy sauce and then a little bit more. So it's probably about a third a cup, but you can add to your taste or liking. You know, if you love it doused in soy sauce, have it like that. If you only like a little bit, do that. If you don't want any at all, that's fine too. And then I love to add about a half a teaspoon of oyster sauce. So not too much, but I do find that it gives some flavor. So if that's something that you have in your house, uh, go ahead and use it. I am assuming that soy sauce is something that is definitely a pantry item. I can get it at my local Dollar Tree or at Walmart. Both of them are going to be less than $1.50. So it's really inexpensive and a very flavorful uh, condiment to keep on hand. And then while that's finishing frying, microwave your dumplings according to package instructions. It's super easy and really worth it. I was so shocked at how delicious these dumplings were and how beautiful they were. I think they were around $3. So really crazy to be able to snag those and have those such a treat. Sometimes I like to leave the rice for a little bit and let it get a little bit crispy. It is so delicious that way. The kids were huge fans and overall this is something that I make quite a bit and we just love in our family. Really? Yeah. Next up we have a refried beans and rice skillet and this is such a budget friendly dish but full of flavor. You want to start off with two tablespoons of oil in the bottom of a pan over medium high heat. Then one cup of rice and you just kind of want to saute that for a couple of minutes just to toast it up. Then to that we're going to add one teaspoon of cumin and two cloves of minced garlic. Again if you don't have the fresh garlic minced you can always use a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix that around really well. Keep toasting that uh, rice. Then to that you want to add one cup of water, one can of drained corn, one can of diced tomatoes. Just want to bring that up to a boil and then reduce the heat to medium, cover, and let that simmer for 15 minutes. And that is going to make sure that your rice is nice and well cooked. And then at that point, you want to add in a half a cup of salsa and one can of refried beans. So I did end up going out and getting the can of refried beans. I bought mine at Aldi. Um, but you could also cook up the pinto beans and make refried beans. I'll make sure to leave a recipe for that because it's about the same price and you get a lot more refried beans. You could definitely freeze them. Uh, but the can is just a little bit easier in these circumstances. Refried beans are not like my forte. I love making black beans because they're super simple, but uh, making refried beans, I'm sure they're, they're also simple, but it's just not something I'm as comfortable with. Uh, but basically you let that simmer for uh, just a couple minutes to cook everything through, make sure it's warm, then top that with a couple of cups of shredded cheese, whatever type of cheese you have, however much you have. I had some of that uh, cheddar that I purchased, so I just put that on there. I covered it up to kind of melt and steam the cheese, and that was our delicious meal. You can serve this with sour cream, salsa, cilantro if you have it, and this goes great in a burrito too if you have leftovers. So for meal number five, it's Ranch Ritz Chicken. This is a family favorite and it has gone viral on multiple platforms more than once. So we're talking Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it. It has gone viral because it's so delicious and so easy. So I started with two of the chicken breasts. We're still gonna have two left after this uh, and slice them in half because I like to cook my chicken a lot thinner when I'm cooking in the crock pot. I find that it keeps it from getting tough and basically keeps it from getting tough. It <laughs> keeps it nice and juicy. Now for the sauce on this, you just mix one cup of sour cream with one can of condensed cream of chicken soup. You could also use condensed cream of mushroom soup. Um, both would be good, but I, pre I prefer the cream of chicken, but it's up to you. And just mix that really well. And then we're gonna place the chicken in the bottom of the slow cooker and then lather that basically on top of the chicken evenly. And then we're topping that with a quarter cup of melted butter mixed with two crushed sleeves of the buttery crackers or like the Ritz crackers knockoffs from Walmart. And you just wanna do your best to try and top that completely evenly. I mean, this is this buttery Ritz topping basically, and it's really flavorful. It's, it's a great, great addition. And then you wanna to top that with about a half a packet of ranch seasoning. So I happen to have like one of the ranch seasoning packets. I know we didn't buy this in the meal plan. You can get a big, container of ranch seasoning at Dollar Tree for $1.25, so it's a great pantry item to have. Then you wanna cook this on low for three hours. Everything should be bubbly. The chicken is basically fall apart delicious and there's so much flavor in this. It is no wonder it's a viral meal but we really, really enjoy it every time we have it. For sides, I serve this with the rice according to package instructions and some 
set French green beans. I just cooked those up with about a tablespoon of butter and a half a teaspoon of Tony Cheshire's or Uncle Tony's seasoning. And this meal is absolutely perfect. For the sixth meal of the week, before we do kind of a leftovers day, I made ch baked chicken and rice with roasted broccoli. I'm gonna start by preheating the oven to 350 degrees, and then you place two tablespoons of butter in a nine by 13 pan, and then dice half an onion. And put that in the bottom of your pan. And then you want to mince two to three cloves of garlic and add those to the bottom of your pan as well. And then place this in your preheated oven for about 15 minutes. And then I took those last two chicken breasts and sliced those in half too. They're large chicken breasts. So you really, as a single person, especially if you have kids, you don't need more than half of a full chicken breast. A lot of them are actually up to a pound a piece. And because we're doing this last, I actually placed my chicken breasts in the freezer for a few days and used my freezer as temporary storage in the meantime, and then took them out. You can also do all the chicken at the beginning of the week and then cook the things that are uh, without meat. It is your choice, whatever works best for you. And then you wanna season your chicken breasts with a mix of one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of dried thyme, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, three quarters a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of black pepper. This meal also tastes really good with bone-in skin on either chicken thighs, chicken legs, drumsticks, chicken quarters. Anything that's bone-in as well is gonna go really well. You're just gonna have to cook it a little bit longer than I do. So once that 15 minutes is up and those onions and garlic are cooked, you can see the butter is melted. You wanna cover the bottom of the pan with one and a half cups of uncooked white rice and then add the chicken to the top of that. And then around the outside of the rice, we're gonna pour a cup and a half of chicken broth, or you could use like chicken bouillon, or if you don't have that, um, you can use water. I don't you know, include the chicken, chicken stock because I think that water or chicken bouillon is just fine, and those are things that you should have around or in your pantry anyway. And then a one and a quarter cups of water as well. Then cover with foil and bake at that 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna make our roasted broccoli. So I just cut up my head of broccoli and mixed it with olive oil, garlic, salt, and pepper, and then placed it on a par parchment paper lined baking sheet. And then once that first 30 minutes is up, I put the broccoli in the oven and then took out the pan that was covered in foil, took the foil off and then put it back in. And you wanna bake that broccoli and the chicken with the rice for another 20 minutes. And you just wanna double check that your rice is all the way cooked. Mine was, but I've had instances where it wasn't. And you wanna make sure that your broccoli is cooked to your liking. For some reason, the chicken kind of looked like tilapia to me or something. Maybe it was the way I cut it, uh, but that was fine. It tasted really good. So sometimes, you know, you don't have the most beautiful dish, but the chicken gives that rice so much flavor and everything kind of like the flavor melds and it tastes super delicious with the broccoli. You could even switch things up and do the broccoli with the Ritz chicken and the green beans with the chicken and rice. Either is perfect. And that is how I made six dinners for my family for just $50. If you're also interested in making breakfast and lunches, check out this next video.